Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we thank you guys very, very, very much for hanging out with us. And that was Eli coming through the side. Almost didn't make this because we were trying to throw him under the bus this morning for him being a sleepyhead. <clears throat> so he comes staggering out here. How you doing, Eli? Tired. He tired. We just barely get up. It's the crack of dawn, six or somewhere. And um, <clears throat> this is our uh, the world that we are. The dogs will not allow us to sleep past a certain time. They will start their own alarm clocks, and they will get us up out of bed if we are not. And they are very excited to see each other. They're very excited to leave their rooms and begin their um, dog pack days, as we all are. All right, today is a preparation day, guys. Let's do a drum roll. All right, and tomorrow's a Shabbat. All right, this is the best drummers uh, South America right here for this uh, group. I'm telling you right here, there is no better drummers than what you see right here. So... Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? What uh, what's a scoop? What's uh, what does it mean to have a preparation day? Uh, preparation day is the day we prepare for the Shabbat, which is the day we take off. We don't work. We spend a day with our Creator. We don't light fires. We don't buy things. We don't cook. So the day before that, we do our cooking. We do our cleaning. We do everything that we need to do prior to the day, so that we can have a good restful Shabbat. And Shabbat is from sunset today until sunset tomorrow. It is a full day, and um, those there's many, many who say that the day begins at the break of the day, 6 o'clock in the morning or whenever the sun comes up is when the day begins. But we have many, many um, scriptures that talk about how this actually is, and all you need is really Genesis 1, and it talks about uh, evening and morning being the first day, evening and morning being the second day, third day, and so forth. Um, that's the order is in. So either our creator made a mistake, and he has his... Uh, his timing's off, or we need to adjust our schedules to Yah's schedules and his dates and times and things of that nature. Okay, so um, yesterday um, I uh, put us all on the front street. We all failed. We all failed this, including myself, because as much as we have read the 1.4 million words over and over and over and over, we did not realize there were multiple Ablamax. And we did realize there were multiple Ablamax, but we didn't understand the entire thing. So... I had to bring in the special forces. I had to get in a soldier of Yah. And this comes from Brother Glenn. All right, we need a drum roll for Brother Glenn. Brother Glenn's the man. Okay, this is um, <clears throat> about Ablamac. And so this is why it's so cool to have a uh, quorum like we do and support like we do and friends and family and just people who are awesome that, that help us out and all this stuff. This is... The story of Ablamac. Are you guys ready? Yep. Okay. The name Ablamac means what? That's just that's for you guys because everyone on the screen can see it. Well, you Anybody? Already, you already I told, told me. Don't, if so you know I, it, then I, don't I, say it. Okay. Can, what does it mean, Kate? You already told us. Right okay. I told you too. Eli was in bed sawing logs. We were trying to mess with him. Okay. What does Ablamac actually mean? Eli, take a guess. Mm, I don't remember. My father is king. Okay. A name born by five old Testament persons. The name of the two kings of Philistia. The first was a contemporary of Abraham. The second, probably son of the former, was king in the days of Isaac. It is quite possible that Abelmach was the royal title rather than the personal name, since in the title of Psalms 34, we find it applied to the king of Gath, elsewhere known by his personal name, Akish, 1 Samuel 27, 2 and 3. Shortly after the destruction of Sodom, Abraham journeyed with his herds and flocks into the extreme southeast country of Palestine. Genesis 20. While sojourning at Gerar, the city of Ablamac, the king of Philistine country, he made believe that Sarah was his sister. And Ablamac took her, intending to make her one of his wives. But Yahuwah rebuked him in his dreams, besides sending barrenness on the women of the household. Genesis 23 and 17. And after Ablamac had, had reproved Abraham most justly for the deception, he dealt generously with him, loading him with presents and granting him with liberty of the land. When contention had arisen between the servants of the two men over the wells of water, the two men made a covenant at the well, at a well, which took its name Beersheba, from this fact of covenant making. Nearly a century later <clears throat> than the events connected with the first Ablamach, a second Ablamach, king of the Philistines, is mentioned in relations with Isaac, who in time of grievous famine went down from his, from his home, probably at Hebron, to Gerar, fearing for his life because of, the, of his beautiful wife, Rebekah. He, he called her his sister just as Abraham had done with reference to Sarah. Neither Ablamach nor any of his people took Rebekah to wife. <clears throat> Quite a variation from the Abrahamic incident. 
But when the falsehood was detected, he upbraided Isaac for what might have happened, continuing nevertheless to treat him most graciously. Isaac continued to dwell in the vicinity of Gerar until contention between his herdsmen and those of Abimelech became too violent. Then he moved away by stages, reopening the wells dug by his father. Uh, finally, a covenant was made between Abimelech and Isaac at Beersheba, just as it had been made between Abraham and the first Abimelech. The two kings of Philistine were probably father and son. Okay. Um, I'm not going to continue on because this is actually pretty long. Uh, maybe I'll post this somewhere. Uh, this should definitely be on our website. So maybe I'll get Miss Nicole to throw this on our website because Brother Glenn is uh, extremely resourceful. Like he is um, one of my favorite dudes that I've, I've probably ever met just because of his resourcefulness at this. And um, does anyone have any questions regarding this at all? Um, I don't think it would make a lot of sense that there are multiple Abimech because, you know, if he got tricked twice the same way, like this is my sister, that would have made no sense. Like, well, this guy didn't learn, you know, it's obvious he has some issues. Yeah, so Abimech is, is, means at least the king, king or something of the right, sort. It's so. kind of, I guess it would be like, kind of like the pharaoh. Pharaoh, right, exactly. So, all right, so um, that hopefully that uh, makes everything clear, clearer than mud for everybody out there. And for anybody that has any questions, leave them in the comments or and we will definitely discuss them. Um, let, we are on chapter 128, gentlemen. Give anyone give me a quick synopsis of where we are. How do we get here? What's what's the scoop? Where? I, I don't think synapsis is the right. Word. Synapsis is the right word. I don't think so. I think that's like you know, something in your brain. Uh, I'll have to look like, that. Synopsis. Synopsis. Yeah. synopsis. Maybe it's a synopsis. Maybe that's the wrong word I'm looking for. Maybe not. It's an O. Yeah. All right. So I'm looking for the bottom line. Let me let me let me dumb this down for my sake, probably. <clears throat> Let's dumb this down and say what happened yesterday. All right. Well, so yesterday, I can't uh, use big Sarah, words. You, go, go, go. <laughs> All right. So yesterday, um, Sarah had Isaac. He was born. He um, promised child. Then they uh, got weaned off at three years old. They had a big feast. Um, Isaac uh, was a couple years old, and uh, Ishmael's little brother was about, um, I think, thirteen at this time. And uh, he ended up breaking, actually breaking one of his arrows that he used because he was a hunter. And since he broke his arrow, he was very angry. He and the bow and arrow at him. But Yahuwah stopped him from killing Isaac. Sarah saw this and she told Abraham that he needs to go. So we are here we're about ready to kick them out. Okay. And so what we are going to, what we will find today is we are going to find the battle of the extracurricular books. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't too big a word. I got that out right. Okay. So this is what we're dealing with here, right? There is the stories we are hearing today clash with Jasher. I'm like, I think it's out of Jasher. I'm like 99% sure it's out of Jasher. All right. Um, you guys ready? Yeah, let's see. Let's go. Therefore, I arose early in the morning and took Hagar and my son Yishmael into the deserts of Arabia, where dwelt a people who were friendly to me. And there I built with Yishmael a heikel unto Yahuwah, our Elohim, that his seed might always be kept in remembrance of Yahuwah. Now, this is different. This part is different than scriptures, right? <clears throat> we, don't, we don't know of anything in scriptures except that Abraham took a water, um, like a water vessel of some kind. And let and, him go himself. Yeah, and took and, and basically said, have a good day. Take care. Um, I hope you're well, right? I mean, we, he still could have done that. He still could have just given a water vessel and have a good day. But he, he could have also done all that and built the Hekel as well. Well, he took off with them is what this is saying. And so in scriptures, it doesn't say it that. It never mentions that. Maybe, it, it, maybe he went with them and they wandered off on their own after this. Maybe. Because this they, they remember, she they had a wandering prior to this without anything where the angel came uh, to Hagar and told her to return, right? This is a second wandering here that, that we're having here. Okay. And Hagar and Yishmael dwelt among the people of the desert and were content. And Yishmael was a mighty hunter with a bow among them. So essentially, I mean, here, here's the gig, um, is that if in the environment that they are in, if they did not have a way to um, survive, I don't think that a, a wandering woman and a child would survive without um, what Abraham was is doing right here. Okay, um, because it's just it, it's a it's a it's a hard environment, right? And it's is uh, you you got a little water, so I think this account is probably the more right account on this. Let's continue on, because there's definitely stories that are different in this account than in in Jasher. And every year at a certain time, I went and dwelt with my wife Hagar and with my son Yishmael. And when Yishmael was twenty years of age, his mother asked my consent to take him to the house of her father in Mitram. For she longed to see her family again. 
Wherefore, I gave them my Baraka, and they departed into the land of Mitzrayim, where they remained one year. Now, we know the story of, the, of her going back to Egypt, right? Right. Um, but let's see, where was it here? We do not know from scriptures that he went back every single year at a certain time, right? That's new. What else do we have new from this? Anyone? Um, maybe the age, talk about his age. Um, maybe that might be it. All right, let's continue on. Six. Wherefore, I gave them my Baraka, and they departed into the land of Mitzrayim, where they remained one year. And while they were in Mitzrayim, Yishmael took to wife Meribah, daughter of Phanes, son of Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzrayim. And after he had taken Meribah his, to wife, they remained in the land of Mitzrayim yet ten years. And Meribah bare unto Yishmael four sons and daughters. After this time, Yishmael took his mother and his wife and his children and returned to the deserts of Arabia. And Yahuwah Barak Yishmael for my sake and increased him in flocks and in herds and in good things. When Yishmael had returned from the land of Mitzrayim, I went as was my custom to stay with my wife Hagar and my son Yishmael. Now, do we remember, did he, when he sent her away, he didn't give her a letter of divorcement, did he? No, I don't think so. I think they're just separating them from Isaac and Yishmael. They're yeah, probably still. This sounds like they're still technically married. Yeah, I think so, I think so. Okay, I think it's just like uh, a very long distance, long marriage. distance family, uh, long distance marriage or something. Yeah. All right, and Yishmael was away hunting. His wife Meribah spake disrespectfully to me and complained of my being in her in their tents. Moreover, she abused her children, and when I chastised her for this long thing, she rose up in anger against me. My wife Hagar saw all these things, and when her son Yishmael had returned from the hunt, she complained unto him of the actions of Meribah toward me. And Yishmael came with, unto me and said, My father, what shall I do with such a wife who abuses my father and my children and speaketh evil of me? For she had also spoken against her husband Yishmael also. And I said unto him, Such a one is not fit to be thy wife, nor the mother of thy children, nor to dwell in thy tents. Wherefore, give her a bill of divorcement. And send her back to the home of her father in shame, and find another more worthy than she to be thy wife, and the mother of these children. So Yishmael gave unto Meribah a bill of divorcement, and sent her back to her father, Phanes, in the land of Mitzrayim. And his mother Hagar raised his children until he took another wife. I now like this the, is completely different. I like the tent peg story better. You like the tent peg story better? So uh, and Jasher talks about how he tells us leave a message. He goes, tent peg is bad. Find a new place to put your, your tent. Well, hold on. Let's 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 get some some uh, clarity to this. So he is Abraham is out. He goes and takes this 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 ride off to where his son is supposed to be. And this is the story of Jasher, folks. And in this, he rides up. And part of it is he told in the story of Jasher, he tells Sarah he will not dismount from his, his whatever he's riding. Horse. His horse. Again, what you got? We have two point of views on this. This yep. is Abraham's riding. He could just be simplifying this for us, explaining the situation instead of like what we heard, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's, it could very well be that. Um, but let's keep on discussing this because he is on his horse, right? And she uh, is in there. Yelling at the kids, according to again, according to Jasher, she does not offer him any kind of drink. I think he off, he asks her for water, and she refuses it. And she she just she's really really rude in the story of Jasher when this goes. And as Abraham is leaving, he says, "I have a message for your man." And she's like, oh, blah, blah, "Whatever." And the the message was, "What was the message?" I uh, tell your husband that an old man came riding on a horse. And he didn't get off, it, uh, and he said to tell you that you need, you need to find a new tent peg. The tent peg that you have is not good. Yeah, the tent peg of your tent is not good. So I'm thinking, maybe maybe he he heard the story and he's like, then he went to his daddy. He came to him. He's like, "Hey, what should I do?" He's like, "Hear the story." That's so he heard the message and he's like, came to him for advice. After that, he's like, oh, "I know it's bad, but now what? What? How do I get rid of her?" Yeah, and have you ever read this before, Jay? No. Okue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So continue on. It's there's there's more to the story. Oh, okay. okay. One thirty. The next year, Yishmael came to my camp, and when he kissed me, and we had eaten together, he said unto me, "My father, according to thine instructions, I did give unto my wife Meribah a bill of divorcement, and sent her back to the home of her father in shame. Now therefore, I come to thee to seek thy counsel concerning obtaining another in her place." Okay, now this is completely contrary. This is different. This is not the same as Jasher at all. This story is a 180. It's different. Um, next time the Abraham, this is story according to the story of Jasher. The next time the Abraham comes, like a year later, whenever it is, he rides up to the tent 
And the woman in the tent greets him, shows him love, throws him favor. And um, basically, he, he the message he leaves this time is what? Yeah, the tent peg is good. You don't need to change it. Yeah, so the tent peg is good. So we have two completely different stories here. And I guess if it doesn't, if it's not something that's in scriptures that we're having to defend, that it's something in the extracurricular books, we're just going to have to go, hmm, interesting. Does it change salvation? No. Does it change the storyline? A little bit, but not a lot. All right, let's continue on. Um, two, now, therefore, I come unto thee to seek thy counsel concerning obtaining another in her place. Now, it pleased me that my son Yishmael had come to me regarding choosing a wife. Therefore, I sought among the women of my camp and found two who were desirous of being wife to Yishmael, even Zola, the daughter of my wife Pelia, and Naomi, the daughter of Kimua, the son of Kish, who had been among the believers who met in the room of my mother in the city of Ur. Now, not only do we have way more details, but we have names and we have genealogy here. And it looks like another wife for Abraham. Yeah, and there, there's, and I mean, it, it's... What do, what do we make of this? I mean, this is this. If you're looking for does this clash against the book of Jasher, this does clash against the book of Jasher. This is these are two separate stories, right? And this is the first time that we've heard a story that's this different, right? This is completely different. Again, it could be just like Cade said, it could be the account of Abraham versus uh, Moses writing Jasher or whoever wrote Jasher back in the day. Okay, anyone have anything? Um, one thing that would definitely be different is when he goes a year later and checks on her, it doesn't seem like she knows who she who yeah, he is. absolutely. But she would absolutely know who he is here. Right, and that's the thing with the Book of Jasher. The Jas Book of Jasher is the biggest, largest book out of everything. Um, how many chapters in this? Eli? 92, I think. 92, and poor Eli drew the short stick, and he has been going through it. What chapter are you on right now? Uh, 18 or 19. 18 or 19. This kid has been on this for like two weeks now at this well, point. It hasn't been two weeks. It hasn't been? I'm I pretty think, sure it I hasn't. I max like one week. I'm getting old. Time is flying. I'm sure it's been two weeks. Okay, you'll have to go with this. Okay, I guess it's only been one week. But um, it, is, it is a huge, extreme amount of detail. And if we want to discount the book of Jasher based on this very small story being wrong, I would advise against that. I believe that Jasher is a, just like all the books, Jubilees and Jasher, I think they're all part of the story. How they get things wrong, what happens, I do not know. We're going to have to wait for Messiah to come and tell us who corrupted what or what the real story was. Okay, five. And I was pleased to give them unto my son Yishmael. Because he had come to me for counsel, and because he had begun to magnify his kahuna, and did, and he, for he did not worship Yahuwah. For he did. Yeah, where did I get not at? All right, well, that's just adding things in. Okay. For he did worship Yahuwah, our Elohim, and sought to overcome his weaknesses. And Yishmael and his family dwelt with me a long time in Gerar, and after that, when I moved my camp to Beersheba, which is by Kebron. Okay, we'll just finish up at 131. And Sarah and I continued to teach our son Yichek and instruct him in the ways of the ancients, that he might be initiated into the Kadesh order of Elohim and receive the Baraka of eternal lives. And Yichek did know Yahuwah, and Yahuwah was with him and did Barak him greatly because he was full of faith and love and did good to all he met. All right, well... Thoughts? Anyone? Um, you definitely. Check, you check's going to be a good person. It looks like he is definitely trained up in the Torah. Trained up in the Torah. Yep. Um, anyone have any more thoughts on this story? This is like this is like the only one that is like really, really, really different from all the other rest. There's some minor details in some of these other things, but this is a um, this is a big big thing. And I guess it doesn't matter because uh, you know Messiah did not come. From Yishmael's people. Well, okay, here's the thing. Um, they had a, you gotta remember, Ishmael had multiple wives. So maybe this is one of the wives, and then you know, there's another wife that greeted him, and she was very nice. Mm, so maybe. that could have been a second, like a third wife or something like that. Uh, it could be. That could be. Oh, there's there's always that, well, you guys missed this detail or this detail, and all of a sudden we all go, oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. That's why I don't think it's a good idea to discount any of these books unless we are dealing with something about Torah or salvation or something of the sort. When people are like, drink the blood, watch your watch your, your kids naked, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, then you know there's problems. There's problems with the doctrine um, because it breaks Torah. And it would make a lot of sense why she didn't know him when he came to the tent because it was a wife he got on his own after Abraham grabbed him, these ones. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe this was before. Maybe. maybe. And then maybe this the other thing was later. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe he had this wife. I don't know. 
We will continue with this. Guys, thank you very much for being part of our family. Thank you for listening in, or discussing this with us. Um, before I let everybody go, the brand new downloads are right here, everybody. You will want to grab the downloads. This is revision four of Yah's scriptures, uh, available right now. Um, but delete the old PDFs. This is the new. It's definitely got a ton of fixes in there. Um, and if you guys would like a free copy of Yah's scriptures, the Apocrypha, it's right here. The entire uh, 37 books is completely free of charge. If you would like to help the prison ministry that is uh, that is out there, you can check out the prison ministry that is um, available right now. For every book that is purchased, we are trying to get one full scriptures into the prisons. I already have a line of inmates, brothers and sisters, and actually brothers, who we've been talking to who are already in line. They really, really want one of these books right here. And so we're going to try to get these. These will be available in February or March. And so if you guys like to pre-order and help us out, we would really appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful day. Have a great preparation day and a wonderful Shabbat. All, All right. right. We're out.